Hi guys, just a quick comment before you start the video. For whatever reason, Zoom actually failed on us and recorded my video and my sound in a really poor quality. I don't know why, we did some testing, everything was working during the recording, everything was working and then boom, I opened DaVinci Resolve to edit the video. And to say the least, I was shocked at the quality that Zoom recorded my video and sound in. But again, it doesn't deter from the value, I think, and you can still enjoy the video. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up. All right, to the video now. Hi guys, this is Artem, and this is another Daniel Jans Ventures podcast. Today we have an amazing speakers. We have Neja from Adspert. She is an expert in PPC optimization, be it Bing, Amazon, Google, or Yandex. And it's my pleasure to have Simas here as well. Simas is very successful Amazon entrepreneur, having a revenue of seven figures. So there is definitely something we can learn from him and from his insight. But just to give a brief um, agenda and provide you a little bit of insight, we have a presentation from Neja. She will talk about Amazon PPC and things you need to keep in mind when you're starting out how does it work and why do you need Amazon PPC? And after that, we will have Q&A. We will talk with Simas and Neja and I'll ask some questions that I'm sure will be of great value to everybody listening and watching. Thank you very much. And Neja, the stage is yours. Thank you, Art. And thank you for having me and for the lovely introduction. Um, so as you mentioned, I did prepare a presentation. So let me just quickly share my screen and we can get started. Okay, I will just ask that somebody please confirm that you see my screen in full screen mode, yes? Yes. Correct, oh, wonderful. Looks Sorry? Looks perfectly. Ah, wonderful, okay, thank you for that. Okay, so let's get started. So for the next 20 minutes or so, I will cover the importance of Amazon as a marketplace and why you should consider it if you haven't already. What is Amazon advertising in a nutshell? So we'll do a brief 101. Um, so I'll cover all the basics as well as how you can get the most of it, finishing with PPC optimization, um, which is what we specialize in here at Adspert. So starting with the most, let's say, basic or top of the funnel questions, um, where are we at with Amazon? What's the current status quo of Amazon? Well, it's been a very exciting year or many years for that matter for Amazon. Um, it seems that it's one of the words on everybody's mind, especially with the shift from brick and mortar commerce to e-commerce. We all observed during 2020 for obvious reasons. And we probably all of us um, on this side as well as in our audience participated in this shift from brick and mortar to e-commerce. So, um, in fact, according to the Marketplace Pulse uh, 2020 Marketplaces Review, Amazon, alongside Walmart, Target, and Etsy, was one of the big winners. Along with the other winners, they all increased the number of sellers, got a bigger chunk of the market buy, and essentially just grew sales. But Amazon wasn't one of the winners from a pure dollar count perspective. A recent Convey survey shows that the general public is very much ready to use Amazon as their primary commerce platform. Most buy products thereafter on the page already, but what I personally found more interesting is that it's the Amazon fulfillment and overall standardized operations that wins over local retailers. So people would be buying from local retailers, they understand the importance of it, but are swayed by the Amazon standardized approach, faster shipping and overall experience. So to get that e-commerce success that most sellers are after, Amazon or not Amazon sellers, Amazon really isn't that much of a choice anymore. It's not that much of an option. Um, it's one of the channels that needs to be at the very least considered. And if you do it right, um, as Simas will tell us later, uh, it can lead to massive success. So that translates directly to the key numbers observed for this e-commerce giant over the past year, so over 2020. There were over 1.3 million new Amazon sellers in 2020. That boils down to 3,500 new sellers every day. 
the gross merchandise volume also grew by 30% compared to, to the previous year, so compared to 2019. But I think the most important thing to note about the gross merchandise volume is that the top sellers represented a smaller percent in 2020. Essentially, more of the sales came from a wider set of sellers than the few top ones. The data, in fact, shows that big sellers are having difficulties when it comes to continue growing because it's just so easy for new, smaller sellers to start selling. You can actually see that over 360,000 sellers were responsible for 90% of the volume on Amazon. So yes, despite being big and already established sellers, there is space for new sellers as well. And lastly, third part, uh, party sellers growth over 2020 was faster than first party sellers. You can see this in the quote here confirmed by the now former CEO of Amazon, that, in our experience, translates to amazing opportunities on Amazon. The Amazon shelves are ready for your products, and the audience with buying power is there to buy them. But while Amazon is one of the easier marketplaces to set up on, is the mere presence enough? I guess you already knew the answer to that, um, and it doesn't come as much of a surprise to anybody. But in one word, no. The answer is no. The mere presence is not enough. Let's take a look at why. So it is a jungle out there. Um, and we've seen sellers having their inventory set up, their prices defined, all the admin is now sorted, and yet the commercial results weren't quite there. And with 1.3 million new sellers in 2020 alone, and over 4.3 million sellers in total, is that really a surprise to anybody? Amazon does indeed bring a lot of potential, but it also comes with its share of challenges. One of them is, one of the main ones, is the eldest in the sales and marketing books. How do I stand out amongst what seems to be an infinity of competitors and competing products? In fact, um, and as an interesting food for thought, there's a number available out there that only 62% of sales of private label sellers come from organic traffic. Think about that. 40% of the sales are coming from elsewhere. That is not an insignificant number, not something to ignore if you really want to find that growth for your products, for your brand, for your business on Amazon. So how, how can we get those 40%? So we, can, we will talk now about Amazon advertising, which can really help push your overall sales. sales. Um, it's the... Amazon advertising essentially is, the, um, is Amazon's take on pay-per-click advertising, and it can help you in your race for the sale against your competitors. How does it do, uh, do that? In many different ways. We will focus on five um, key aspects um, today, but there are definitely an infinitive amount of benefits to Amazon advertising. So let's start with the first one. So it can absolutely help you to increase your product visibility. If you're willing to pay for it, no longer will your product be on the end page of the search results. Later, it can also help you increase the sales for new products. And we can even include products that are not performing that well organically because you guessed it and it links to the first point. It increases product visibility. Um, late, the next point, um, it is very, very useful when it comes to sales and promotions. Having Amazon advertising, it will drive traffic to your special events such as discounts, promotions, sales, and so on and so forth to make sure that you get the most out of your efforts. It also helps you defend your market position as well as improve your organic rankings. All in all, it sounds really good, doesn't it? Um, but if it's so cool and so awesome, is really everybody winning at it? Again, not exactly. So before you consider Amazon advertising though, there are a few things we need to talk about. Amazon advertising is not something that is just gonna magically work out of the box. There is a bit of free work that needs to be done. So let's go through that and then we will dive deeper into Amazon advertising as a whole. So the prep work. What, what are the six key points you should focus on? Five more on the mandatory side and one that is slightly more optional. 
And as a note, the more time you invest in this, the bigger the chances of your success in Amazon advertising as a whole. So let's start with the first point, the listing text. That's the first thing you need to take care of. The, the written information you offer regarding the product you're selling, you need to think about meaningful and keyword loaded titles about very clear and concise bullet points describing the products you're selling. Um, those are the ones that show up under the product title on the product detail page. The actual product description needs to contain all the relevant information about the product. And with all of that information, which is a lot in and of itself, you still need to make sure that it is brief, concise, informative, and as SEO loaded as possible. So all of your SEO knowledge and experience you can implement at this point to make it work for you. Moving on, we need to talk about product images. Um, these matter, and a lot. Um, images worth more than a thousand words. Make sure that you have quality images of your products, uh, a minimum of 1,000 pixels if you have the option, not just one image aim for seven or upwards so that you can really provide a good notion of what the product is all about, what it looks like, um, what the customers can expect. The main image also should have a white background. Uh, and if you can provide a video as well of the product, that is just extra points all over the place. Then you need to think about reviews and ratings. Now, this is something that you're not in direct control of. That is not something that you can just write up for yourself, really. Um, but it is also important. The higher the reviews, the better the ranking, the better your Amazon advertising is going to work. It's very difficult to give an exact number here because, of course, the higher the better. But if you need a baseline to get you started, aim for 10 reviews and have four or higher ratings for new products. Also, make sure you provide answers to the frequently asked questions. Those really help in generating trust for your brand. And then we're back to something that you can control, logistics. So you can pick between fulfillment by Amazon or FBA and fulfillment by merchant or FBM. Make your pick, make sure everything is set up, that everything is running smoothly so that when those first sales start coming in, you don't have a problem with shipping, with logistics or anything like that. This is very, very important to have sorted out from the very beginning. The fifth thing to, th to think about is price. So you need to make sure that the prices that you set match those of similar products or products in the same category that your product is in. You also need to make sure that the prices are competitive um, with all of your competitors to help you win the buy box. We will talk about the buy box a bit later on in this presentation. Um, but for now, let's just mention that it is important that you have a competitive price um, because it links to the buy box and not winning the buy box is not that good for your advertising. And lastly, and this is the optional um, aspect I mentioned before, consider getting your Amazon brand registry sorted. Uh, while this is not a hard requirement, it will enable you to use all of the available Amazon advertising campaign types that we'll see in the next section. Again, this is optional. You can skip it if you're just getting started, but if you'd like to leverage the full power of Amazon advertising, it is definitely important to keep it in mind. So once you have all of these done and ready, we are pretty much set to move on to Amazon advertising. So Amazon advertising, I mean, where do you start? Um, what should you focus on? What does it even look like? Those are the questions we often get with brand new sellers. And it is something that it's, not that easy to wrap your brain around, especially if you're new to online advertising world, but we try to kind of get the key points in this presentation so that you at least have a starting point. Of course, it goes without saying that Amazon advertising is much more complex than what we will show today. This is your starting point, your step one, step two, step three, um, to get you started with your experimentation. So let's take a look. Starting at the very beginning, um, yes, it, does, it can feel like a big scary thing, but it doesn't have to be. It is a solution that is made with its user in mind. And in many ways, it's similar to other advertising platforms if you have experience with those. 
in the sense that you place bids for keywords, products, product categories, or audiences, let's just call them bidable objects, um, and then you measure the performance of your advertising by checking the usual metrics. So you check impressions, so how many times was the ad shown, you check clicks, how many times was it clicked, how much did you spend or how much did those clicks cost you, how many sales did that generate, uh, what is your advertising cost of sales or ACoS, and what is your um, ROAS or return on ad spend. So these are, let's say, the three basic aspects that are the same as with any other um, advertising platform with the exception of ACoS, which is an Amazon-specific term. But all of these basic aspects aside, there are a few differences which need to be considered so that you can get the most out of your advertising on Amazon. And for the purpose of this presentation, we'll focus on the different campaign types available and the infamous buy box. So let's start with the campaign types. We essentially have three different ones. We have sponsored products, which is by far the most popular one. Sponsored brands, which is used mainly for increasing brand awareness and recognition. And sponsored display. This last one is the only one that is actually showing ads off of Amazon as well. So you can reach users interested in your product even when they're not actively browsing on Amazon. How cool is that? Amazing. So let's go through each of them separately. This is gonna be a bit technical, um, but I really just want to make sure that in a few sentences, you get the key aspects of each of the different campaign types. So sponsor products, as mentioned, it is the most popular campaign type. It's the one that's driving the most ad spend, at least in our experience. Um, and it's usually where advertisers start. It is easy to understand why, because the product ad is promoting a single ad. So it is very, in, in a nutshell, it's just driving the sales of your product. That's, that's what it does. That's its own, its main purpose. And it redirects anybody that clicks on it directly to the product detail page. So there are no stops along the way or anything like that. You click on an ad, you end up on the product page. Now, pretty much everybody on Amazon whose products are eligible for the buy box or featured offer can use this campaign type. The ads show up on the top or bottom of the search page, as well as on the product detail page. Now, the targeting available for sponsored products is either automatic or manual. Um, with automatic, Amazon selects the billable objects, so keywords or products or product categories, and as well as the bids, and it places the bids for you. With manual, it's a bit more flexible, so you can do all of that yourself manually, but by being so flexible, it's also a bit more time consuming. You need to invest more time, you need to keep on top of it to make sure that you're really leveraging the full power of it. Now, auto is great for when you're getting started, but it's also great for when you're already past that starting point because it can help you discover new things to bid on, or it can help you detect, uh, detect tendencies to consider in your manual campaigns as well. So having an auto campaign running is always a good idea if you're playing around with sponsored products. Okay, now let's move on to sponsored brands. So this is essentially the brand building campaign type Amazon advertising offers, and its purpose is to help build brand awareness amongst Amazon users. The ads show up at the top alongside or within the search results, but the biggest difference is that there are more than one ad type with sponsored brands. There are three. We have a product collection where you can show up to three products in the ad. Um, we have the store spotlight if you have a store, so it's available only to those professional sellers that do have an Amazon store set up. And we have video, that's the most recently added one and the most exciting one because we all know video is a format that engages users much more than just a static ad. Um, so it is part of the sponsored brands. Uh, campaign type is something to definitely play around with. Now, contrary to sponsored products and even sponsored display ads, which we'll chat about in a moment, sponsored uh, brands ads don't take the users to a specific products page, but rather to a predefined Amazon landing page 
or to the brand store page. So it makes sense to pay special attention to building very appealing and engaging content on those pages so that you support your ads. You can place bids for keywords or products um, or product categories for your sponsor brand campaign, but the eligibility criteria, so who gets to use them here, is a bit stricter because professional sellers need to be enrolled in the Amazon brand registry in order to be able to leverage this campaign time. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on to the last one. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, I just need to take a sip of water. Okay. Okay, the last and most recently added campaign type on Amazon advertising is sponsored display. This one varies from the other two we just reviewed in that it shows ads off Amazon as well, leveraging the DSP network. That includes third-party website and apps, and the ads are shown based on the audiences that you pick when you set up your campaign. Um, it's a very useful campaign type to complement your advertising activity as it will work for you off of Amazon as well, but it does have a few special placements on Amazon too. For example, right under the buy box, that's a placement you get with sponsored display. These ads are also focusing on a single product, the same way sponsored products are, and they take the user to the product details page. The targeting here does not include keywords, so you cannot place bids on keywords, but you can place bids either on products, so that is an, a specific product or a product category, and Amazon introduced a new biddable object, which is audiences. Um, in terms of eligibility, this campaign has the same limitations as sponsored brands um, and therefore require the seller's enrollment in Amazon brand registry. At, but besides that, something to keep in mind is that this is a campaign type that is not yet available in all marketplaces. So if you're interested in where you can use it or not, I would highly recommend that you always check the Amazon sponsored display landing page before you make any decisions, just to get an updated sense of where this campaign type is and is not available. Okay, so those were the three campaign types. Now let's talk about the infamous buy box or featured offer. So this is essentially the add to cart element on the Amazon product detail page. And being eligible for it is what will enable you to serve ads for your sponsored products campaigns it's especially important because in fact, there's data online showing that 82% of Amazon sales go through the buy box. So that is the absolute vast majority and it is not something you want to miss out on. But how do you win it? Like how, how do you win the buy box? Um, it's available to professional seller accounts that are selling new items. That's very important, they need to be new, not used. And they are immediately available. You also need to check your eligibility status available in your seller central. But if it were that easy, then every product would be winning the buy box, right? But we can all only have one, um, sorry, not every product, every seller would be winning the buy box, but we can actually have only one winner for each buy box. So how do you increase your chances of winning the buy box? There are also many things impacting your chances of winning the buy box. If we had to pick a few that according to the internet and our own experiences and the experiences of our customers have the biggest impact, um, we would narrow it down to leveraging FBA, so fulfillment by Amazon, having seller fulfilled prime if possible, a very competitive price. So remember how before we were talking about price, this is where it plays in. If you don't have a competitive price, the chances of being the buy, well, winning the buy box are much smaller and optimal shipping time. So these are, let's say, the four key points we would always recommend to start with. Um, but honestly, the buy box, it has to do with your overall quality of Amazon advertising. So the more time you invest in the prep that we talked about before and having everything set up for your product, in really paying attention to what you're doing, what is selling better, what is selling worse, what are the best prices and so on and so forth, 
the better overall chances of winning the diabetes. But yet, if it were that easy, if Amazon advertising just had this step one, step two, step three game, everybody would be absolutely winning at it, right? And that's not really the reality of things, as we all know. So what else can you do once you have your pre-advertising work done and your advertising is set up with all the relevant campaign types and all the relevant targeting? Well, in all honesty, the biggest certainty of online advertising is that it is by definition entirely uncertain, meaning it changes on a daily basis. It shifts whenever your competitors make big moves or the audiences move on to the next cool thing. If Amazon is running its prime day, um, it even goes as far as to consider the weather. For example, there are research, there are researchers out there that um, conducted investigations that show that if it's bad weather, people are more inclined to buy on e-commerce as opposed to when it's sunny and lovely outside. So there are a lot of things to take into consideration, but what can you do about this? Well, you can optimize your advertising. So what does this mean exactly? Essentially, it means that you have an automated solution to place your bids for you based on the performance of your campaigns. It will find the sweet spot between the best bid for the best biddable object for the most suitable product uh, product ads to maximize your chances of selling the product. It will learn from your account and your targeted audience's behavior and reactions and adjust accordingly. So it will do all the grunt work for you. Now, of course, you can do all of this manually. You can have your Excel sheets, you can check your reports on a daily basis, review it, make the decisions, then go into Seller Central, make the adjustments. But most users we talk to quickly realize that it goes beyond a full-time job. And there are so many things to think about on Amazon aside from advertising, that with the sudden growth surge that comes when, once you hit that sweet spot on Amazon, it just becomes unmanageable very, very fast. And that's actually where AdSpeed comes in. So we essentially connect to existing Amazon advertising accounts and we optimize them. Essentially, as I said before, we do our best to find a sweet spot um, and get you the biggest bang for your advertising buck. So our machine learning algorithm processes endless amounts of data in a split of a second to make data-driven decisions and place the right bids to get the maximum outcomes. This essentially means that you do not have to be updating your massive Excel sheets to figure out what's going right or what's going wrong and you can focus on the bigger picture while our, alg our algorithm does all the work for you. So aside from that massive data processing, what else do, does the um, AdSpurt machine learning algorithm take care of? So we model the conversion delay, for example, as well, um, especially for bigger ticket items. When a user gets to the product detail page, they might not buy on the first visit. It might take them a few days of thinking, maybe discussing with their spouse or checking their finances or whatever it is that they need to do, getting back, thinking a bit more. Then in a week, they come back again and on the day 10 after clicking on the ad, they convert. So just because the numbers are not there right after the customer clicked doesn't mean that the, re the results are not coming. So we make sure that we model that to keep it in mind so that we continue bidding and not let, miss out on any potential conversions. Um, we also detect hidden similarities and patterns affecting the performance and we act on them. Uh, we do have an automated addition of high performing keywords and product targets from auto to manual campaigns like I mentioned before, having an auto campaign running even when you're past the learning state um, it helps detect new keywords that the custom that make sense to bid on or new products that make sense to bid on. So we push those directly or we pull those from the auto campaigns, put them in the manual campaign so that we have more power over the bidding on those um, biddable objects. 
And if you're running any other ad online advertising platforms, we do offer support for Google Ads, Yandex, and Microsoft Ads as well. And with that, thank you all very much for um, staying for listening through this, I believe it was a bit over 20 minutes. I hope you find it, found it useful. And back over to you, Artem. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was really insightful, interesting. Definitely good stuff. I am sure many people who are not familiar with Amazon got a brief masterclass in what to keep in mind when starting a PPC on Amazon. Now we are joined again by Simas, and again, as I mentioned before, Simas is doing pretty well on Amazon, and he has hands-on experience. And I wanted to bring Simas to kind of bring that seller perspective to our conversation. Um, so obviously, Neja is a PPC specialist, so she approaches it from a different perspective, from a maybe more technical optimization perspective, but Simas can talk actually about um, the dollars and the euros and what you actually get by doing PPC campaigns. So maybe we can um, open uh, Q&A and Simas, if you have any questions and maybe you can further introduce yourself, I'm sure our listeners would love to hear more about you and what do you do and what do you actually sell on Amazon? Oh, <laughs> uh, so thank you, Artem. Uh, and thank you, Neza, for a great presentation. It was very useful and uh, everything in one place uh, to understand how Amazon advertising works. Uh, so uh, at the beginning, probably, so I'm not very, uh, popular person out there in social media and I do not advertise myself. Uh, so it, probably from the beginning, I would say that um, uh, why, why sh like why, why I'm the person as an expert should be uh, saying something about Amazon. Uh, so I'm online seller since 2009 and I'm professional Amazon seller. Uh, so full-time Amazon seller since 2014. Uh, I'm selling in all major Amazon marketplaces, uh, starting from USA, Canada, Mexico, and all major European marketplaces. And um, running for private label brands right now, and all of them in 2020 made more than uh, 3 million um, USD in revenue. So, um, from the very point of perspective, uh, like uh, PPC management uh, and um, what Neza said that it's uh, necessary. We, we felt the necessity of optimization uh, very last year because uh, when we noticed that since we are selling in all major Amazon marketplaces around the world and we have more than 400 SKUs per marketplace, it was very hard to manage manually everything in each marketplace. So uh, to manage each SKU with their own uh, group of uh, keywords, uh, product targeting and so on. And uh, Neza just showed how, how many options to advertise each uh, SKU Amazon uh, provides to, to the Amazon sellers. So um, it was very difficult for us to do everything manually, either it requires uh, a lot of stuff, or we wanted, we didn't want to increase the number of staff, therefore we were looking for the optimization process. So, so I believe that uh, uh, PPC management and PPC optimization is the new trend, and uh, there, there's a new possibility how to uh, optimize not only PPC, but optimize uh, management of the staff in the company as well. Uh, good stuff. Thank you very much. Um, maybe we can start with some questions. I could maybe start uh, with the first one. I'm familiar myself personally with obviously Google Ads. I mean, if you spend any time online, you either <laughs> see them or maybe in my case, you end up creating them. So. Um, when it comes to Google Ads, and obviously I just want to see how how uh, Amazon PPC differs, because maybe 
some of our listeners have experience running maybe Google Ads campaigns, so it's something that they consider pretty familiar territory. So would you say that um, Amazon PPC platform and algorithm differs a lot compared to Google Ads? Because in Google Ads, you can try to get as high quality score as possible. You, you work with your CTRs and uh, basically the higher quality campaign you have, the less you end up paying for click and mostly you will have higher visibility on the platform as well. And there is obviously a lot of optimization that needs to go, you know, go into the work. But what would you say if, if somebody who already, you know, been doing Google Ads campaigns or has some previous experience, how would you characterize maybe Amazon PPC? Is it completely different territory? What would you guys say? Okay, so I guess I can get started. Please um, do. I mean... <laughs> There are, of course, similarities between the two, um, as I think there was a slide in between there. I mentioned that you place bids on your biddable objects and you measure the results, right? That's the one, two, three of PPC pretty much everywhere. Um, but Amazon is a special beast in and of itself um, in the sense that it does have different targeting, for example. You can target on products. That's not something um, you can target mm -hmm. products. Sorry, so specific ASINs. That's not something that's available on Google. You also have um, the auto campaigns that pick the keywords for you and place the bids mm -hmm. for you. You don't have to really do anything. You can just click the button and that's it. Again, something that's not there on Google. Now, whether or not it works, that's Amazon algorithm. It can produce results, sometimes better, sometimes worse, like everything in life. The big difference that we really notice, uh, because we spend a lot of time trying to nail that on Google, is that Amazon doesn't have the audience and demographics data. So on Google, you can place a bid that is more suited to show your ads, for example, I don't know, if you're selling female uh, women's t-shirts, um, mm -hmm. you can place a bid that shows that ads to females because the conversion possibility is much higher there. Again, not a thing on Amazon. So it is different, but I think from a user standpoint, the, bigger di the biggest difference that the users notice is that Amazon is like its own little universe. So you click on an ad, you don't go anywhere. You still stay in Amazon because it is mm -hmm. a marketplace that has its own advertising on top of it, whereas Google, it sends you somewhere else. You don't really know where you're gonna land. And sometimes like, there's no problem with that, but other times it can be, I don't know if, if sketchy is the right word, because Google does put a lot of emphasis on quality, but you really don't know where you're gonna land in the end of the day. So those are the things that um, we noticed. Of course, Google does have, for example, smart bidding. So it has its own, let's say, bid management, so yeah, there, there are similarities um, as well as differences, but I wouldn't say that just because you nailed Google Ads, you can kind of just consider that Amazon is gonna be just another victory in your, um, in your wins book, I guess. If you have such a book, I do, that's why I'm saying it. Um, it, it would be better to kind of take a seat go through the uh, courses. Um, Amazon has a number of resources for sellers, the seller university, to really see how it works and how it will work for you specifically. Because with such an uncertain environment like online advertising, you need to understand how it works and then how to make it work for you. And just thinking that's gonna be a copy paste from Google Ads to Amazon advertising, from my perspective, I don't think that's the smartest thing to do. Um, but hey, that's just me. It could be that people found um, success with that. It's just an opinion, take it or leave it. Okay, that, that's what I wanted to hear. Basically, um, if you work with Google Ads already, uh, you should approach Amazon PPC as its own platform with its own quirks, yes. you know, shortcomings, as you mentioned, maybe demographics and um, yeah, good, good stuff. Uh, Sima, do you have anything to add? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, and this, since I'm not the Google expert, so so uh, I'll not give the question of, uh, about the Google advertisement. 
-hmm. But at this point, when you mentioned the, the different the difference between the Google and Amazon, so I, I would like to jump in on Amazon, uh, different campaigns. I mean, you, you show that there are video campaigns, uh, product targeting, uh, brand that sponsored ads and so on. So when you start the optimization process of, for, for, the, for your clients, uh, do you make anyhow different in terms of perspective, like how you manage the bids and uh, set up the, the goals and so on for, for, for those uh, campaigns, or you just uh, have some kind of uh, internal decision making process and just you when you launch all of them and then you control and try to spend as less as possible and earn as much as possible how, how does it work that's an excellent question uh thank you for that so first i would start by saying that we support whatever it is that amazon allows us to support via the amazon advertising api uh, so regardless of the campaign type you choose or the targeting um, Adspert is either already supporting it or just it's in the works and it will be available shortly because we make it our business to make sure we're on top with what Amazon is releasing. Now, when it comes to actual optimization, um, we essentially approach every campaign um, in the same way. So we check the performance result of that campaign and of the ad groups within it and specifically of the search term report that's something every platform provides so we take a look at that and we check which are the best performing biddable objects so keywords products product categories audience it doesn't really matter and then we make decisions um, based on that statistical data so ours is always a mathematical problem we try to solve and at the let's say the, the core of it is always to maximize uh, the, pro the profits so how do we get more outcome for the same input that said we do um, allow our customers of course because we don't want to disregard our customer strategies and business objectives we um, have a number of goals available as part of our product um, so our customers can create uh, performance groups. Those are an expert term, which are essentially groups of campaigns. So you can think about them similar in the way that they're structured to Amazon portfolio. So you group a number of campaigns into a single performance group and assign a goal to it. So that goal for expert acts as, as a constraint, as a limitation. So if you have a goal of cost per month, we will do our bidding and our optimization, but we will consider the limitation that we cannot spend more than X per month. Or if you're looking for an ACOS of, I don't know, 17, we will place our bids with the limitation that on average, the daily ACOS should be as close to 17 and so on and so forth. So there are different goals and they always act as a limitation to our bidding, to our bid management. Um, but whether or not it's a different ad type, like if we, if it's a, I don't know, sponsored brand video versus ad type store spotlight, it makes no difference. Like we don't really look into the creative. We look at the, what is producing results. That's a mathematical game for us, a statistical game for us. And we have a lot of very advanced forecasting models also running in the background that are constantly analyzing all of the data we can pull out of Amazon um, to make sure that the decisions we're making are in our customer's best interest and in support of their business goals and objectives, which in our environment translate to the optimization goals. Did that answer your question? Yeah, so, so that means that you, you do not much care about the different no. the, the different campaigns. You care about the statistics and either those uh, campaigns working or not, the bids are working or not. Uh, if they are working, you increase the bid under the limitations, of course, because the seller is the king. He, he, uh, yes. the, uh, the seller has the ability to decide the, the budgets and all, all kind of stuff. Correct. 
great thing. So it's very, very useful for, for the seller. So even though you optimize it, but still the seller has the ability to control the process. Yes, the, yes, like, indeed. Like the the seller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So and um, so that's what uh, leads to, for me to another question about the decision making process. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said that everything based on the mathematics and statistics. So it's how long you are running those campaigns. You, you how, how how do you make a decisions? Like it, it's very clear that you cannot make a decision out of a few clicks. You know, five clicks is not enough to make an assumption either it works or not. So yes. how, how do how do you make a decision? So and according to those decisions, you adjust the bids, placements, product targeting, and so on. So. Correct. So as you said, and it is completely correct, it's statistically like just not a good idea to be making any sort of conclusions based on five clicks, 10 clicks, or I don't know, one day of advertising with no clicks or zero conversion rate or something like that. So what we do is we make sure that the decisions that we make are made once we have a significant amount of data. Um, that is very difficult to put a timestamp on because based on the budgets that our sellers are putting in, it could take a day if the budget is massive or it could take a week if it's a smaller seller and they don't want to spend that much money. So we don't really um, take time as uh, like the main variable into account all that much. What we make um, place more emphasis of, on is having a sufficient amount of data that statistically we can see that there's a trend there, that there's um, something happening that the data is confirming. But there is one thing to consider. So we always ask, our, ask ourselves, what's the bigger risk here? If we pause something that we think is not working, we lose all of the conversions that might come. Like without a doubt, it's paused, it will generate nothing. But if we continue running it, we might waste some budget, but we will get the learnings that will eventually lead us to those conversions. They might be few, and they might just confirm the theory that this doesn't work, but then it will be confirmed. It won't be a hypothesis. We will really get to the bottom of line and be able to say, hey, guys, like this is really not working. We need to do something about it. So there's no, like we need to explore to exploit, kind of a deal, um, but we do, we do always make sure that if we are the ones making the decision, we make sure we have a significant amount of data before we make the decision. Of course, like this is not, let's say, a game that only we play. So the sellers are always free to say, I don't wanna wait until you guys kind of get your data and just go in and pause a specific campaign um, that happens, it's fine, like ultimately it's the seller's um, advertising that we're optimizing. So if they want to make the decision instead of us or kind of preempt that, that is totally okay. But from our perspective, if you would just to leave a campaign running, we would always wait to have enough data to be able to make a decision that statistically makes sense. Yeah, so that's great. That's uh, good to know the process and then uh, knowing that it's a very important probably from the seller perspective and, and other sellers who is listening to this um, about the product launches. Mm -hmm. When you launch a new product, you don't have any statistics. Neither the seller has because it's always a, kind of a game of, uh, you know, a roulette, I would yeah. say. You do your homework, but you still, you never know how, how it would work. So how would that work with the experts and launch campaigns when you run the PPC, but you don't have a data and um, wouldn't that work like uh, the seller decides, okay, I would run PPC. I would like to run that PPC, even though it is not profitable, but with the higher bids, I want to get the more awareness, more clicks, more, more conversions, and that's how to increase the uh, product uh, rankings and so on. But uh, wouldn't that become that if seller gives you the product launch campaigns to you to optimize, you would kill them immediately. Like you, you, okay, that we, since we don't know the, the results, we don't know the statistics. So we, we, we start the campaign with the bids 
starting from one cent per click. Instead, that the seller would like to to bid higher numbers, like let's say one one euro per click. What do you think? That so work with the launch. Okay, so that is another excellent question. Thank you. Um, so as I mentioned before, the same uh, that when it comes to campaign type or ad type, it doesn't really make a difference for us. It doesn't either when it's a brand new product, but there is, like you said, an important aspect to it where, that, where it doesn't have the data really for us to base our decisions on. Um, so the game there is not really to, for example, improve the ACoS. The game there is to place the um, ad in front of as many people as possible. So we're leveraging that number one benefit of Amazon advertising, which is to increase product visibility, right? That, that's what we want to do. We need to get it out there. Um, we do have a goal type, which is cost per month. Um, and that one essentially, let's say, forces us um, to spend a specific amount of money for that campaign. So from an expert optimization perspective, and I'm speaking merely about expert optimization here um, because other tools might work differently, what we would recommend is that that campaign is not placed in campaign uh, in a performance group that has other campaigns but has its own standalone goal um, of cost per month. Because when it's cost per month, what we will worry about is getting that ad um, in front of people. Essentially, that is the main goal. The goal is to spend the money. And if you spend the money, you increase the visibility. Now, how high the bids will be, that really depends on the category you're in, the keywords we're targeting, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but AdSpurt will be learning from day to day which which bids are working better so it might get more aggressive or more defensive because we still pull that data daily and we see which bids won and which didn't um, so we pull that data and we either then switch to being more aggressive or more defensive again with the purpose of getting that ad in front of people like that's the main goal of having the cost per month just to spend that budget get the ad out there and that is what we recommend to do with new product launches the one thing that we do need to worry about is that that product is not part of an ad group with other products and that essentially it has its own standalone campaign because we optimize on campaign level um, if you put the product in a campaign that already has i don't know a hundred older products that are performing better most likely the algorithm will be shifting the budget there and you don't want that. You really want to push the new product because you need that visibility, you need that data, you need to generate like that first impact where essentially, um, I think you mentioned like, I'm okay with this not being profitable. You need to communicate that to us in the sense of it's a campaign with a new product, go to town with it. This is the money you get to spend, do it. And this way we also don't impact the performance of all the other products, which is also very important. All right, so that makes sense. Uh, and that's a great answer from you because, um, so when, when you set up the goals, so, so during the launch phase, you, you can set up just the cost per month, not the ACOS, for example. If you put the ACOS uh, goal, you might start optimizing it to, to reach that level, and then it, uh, it wouldn't work as, as per launch campaign. But if you set up the goal as a uh, you know, uh, cost per month to, to the amount uh, of the ad spend, so then you will run uh, aggressively without taking care much about you know the the either converts or not and so okay that makes sense that 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 makes sense and uh, it's use, useful useful for sellers to know okay maybe i can jump in and ask a question maybe as well or two um so um, obviously when we talk about ppc it, it it hits sellers right here in the heart because we start talking about money and uh, sellers obviously want to get as much sales as possible with as little investment as possible. That's why That's why they pay for SEO, right? I mean, that's the dream, having organic traffic com coming out of Wazoo and not worrying about PPC because PPC is like crack. 
even if it works for you, you get addicted. So uh, let's talk money. Let's talk money for a while. Um, so when I go to Amazon, obviously Amazon has marketplaces all over the world and Amazon is expanding. They're not sitting still. They just they expanded in Sweden. So that's a new marketplace. So Scandinavia basically is now available to sellers on Amazon who want to attract customers in that region. Great. How much money do you need to spend? How much money do you need to spend to get started? I know, of course, um, usual answer is it depends. It depends on <laughs> amount of marketplaces. It depends on your product. It depends on the competition level. But um, just an example, some people get really scared when you talk about PPC because um, they might think that you need to invest 10 grand minimum. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. So maybe uh, Neja and Simas, maybe you can guys shed some light on the money side of things. How much do you need? What is too little? And what is, uh, you know, what are the variables that you need to take into account when you start calculating that budget, that PPC budget? Well, um, well, from me, from my seller perspective, when, when, when I do the product launches, I do the whole amount of calculations before you do that. And yes, you, you was right, or you were right when you're saying that uh, it depends, but that it really means it depends. So when I decide the, 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 to launch a new product, I'll do the whole bunch of calculations, which means uh, lead times, minimum order quantities from suppliers, the all, whole the process, uh, logistics, how, how much would that cost for logistics? Then I make estimations how, uh, how many units I expect to sell, say, sell by, per day. Then I evaluate the competition and I see how, how many reviews other competitors have and I assume that I will have none. Uh, then that means that I will have to boost sales by PPC, run, run aggressive PPC campaigns so that I would appear in the search results at, at all, uh, and uh, all the rest of stuff. So, so it's a, you, you never know when you start it, and then when you go along, you, you adjust your, your PPC ad spend, you, you adjust your... Um, based on the results you get, then you adjust. So you, you never know, but you have to make estimation. For sure, if you, you're diving into the uh, niche, which runs, let's say, 20 million euros per month, so it's not enough 1,000 euros. Just forget it. It's better to give that 1,000 euros to a uh, child care center or, or something. It, it, it will be worth than, you know, spending those money into, into Amazon pool. Uh, so um, it really depends where you're going. It really depends on the competition and it really depends on the uh, analysis you did before launching a product. So that's my opinion. It's, and there's no a single uh, solution. It is uh, many different factors that affects the PPC budget. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd have point. to Measure. agree with that, to be honest. I mean, I know, Artin, that's the most difficult questions we get all the time. If we had a straight answer, I'm guessing we'd be up for, like, I don't know, the Nobel Prize in economics or something like that, because this really is a very uncertain game, and there are a lot of things to take into consideration. One thing that I would add to what um, Simas just mentioned, which I completely agree with every word that he just said, and it does really depend, is that the, the good part of online advertising is the flexibility of it. So if you wanna run an ad on the TV, you kind of get an invoice that you need to pay in advance and that invoice is 20,000 euros. If it's, I don't know, I'm just making stuff up, but it's a high number usually, um, or in a newspaper. So those numbers are still fairly high that you need to pay in advance. And still, yeah, you get some metrics of what the, the audience might be, but there's no guarantee of results. Whereas on online advertising, Amazon advertising included, it's very flexible. So yes, you can start small if you're nervous, not too small, because that's money wasted, like Sima said, but there is like a reasonable amount that you're probably 
willing to start off with, break it down into days, run it for a week, two, three, see what happens, and then make your decisions based on that. See if your bids are too low and you're never winning um, anything, like your, your ads are showing really on the end page, if at all, then increase it. Or if your bids are so high that you're always winning and you're spending way too much, then decrease it. Like it's, it's really a game that is very transparent um, and you can take a look at the data and you can make the decisions on the fly. Although I would say that making too many decisions too close together when you're launching is also not that good because then the algorithms don't get the chance to learn properly about your products and campaigns but it is there. So if you're worried about overspending, it's in your power to kind of pull the plug immediately if you really want to. Whereas with like traditional media, you kind of need to pay that money in advance and then see what happens. So yeah, I'd love to give a number, would love mm -hmm. to get me that Nobel prize, but it, it's just. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If, if uh, again, if, if I, yeah, Simas, please do. I will add on. So it's like nobody has a crystal ball who can guess the result, what would happen if it happens. So um, I would say my advice for the sellers would be uh, if you are very sensitive on the budgets, so I, I would go into the less competitive niches. If uh -huh. you want to, if you have budgets and you're not that much sensitive and uh, you do not have afraid of overspend uh, for some certain period of time, just in order to get the results and check out how the work's going on, then that's okay. You can go on the on more competitive niches, uh, bid more, get sales, get results, and then adjust based on the results what you get. And that's uh, Neza, what, what she said, that that's a great thing on PPC that you can adjust easily. You can, if you change your mind, if you see something is not working, you don't need to spend uh, money for the billboard uh, advertisements and so on, and then you, you cannot measure those uh, outcomes. Uh, from PPC management perspective, you can easily measure the results and then you can adjust them. So um, results based on the possible competition you are going to face. And then you, if you want, if you have less budgets, if you are very sensitive to the budgets, then you should go to the less competitive niches. If you are okay with the money, you, you have a bunch amount of money to spend on ad advertising and uh, other competitive competition issues, then you, you can go to higher ones and uh, try to get more sales. Okay, so if I translate that to human language, um, what I would say is following uh, based on the input and tell me if my translation is um, a bit off and if it reminds you of a Google translation. So basically, the more competition, the more general, broad the category, the more you most likely will have to invest. So if there are 100,000 sellers and the, the volumes are really big, most likely you will have to spend more on PPC, most likely. Again, it depends. Let's not go back there, but it depends. And if you are starting out in a very small niche where there is not a lot of competition, not a lot of sellers, and the volumes are not as big, you can get away, especially in the beginning, with a much smaller budget. But again, um, you can start probably, if we're talking numbers, still I know you will hate me for this, but if we're talking numbers, you can get some good data spending already a few hundred dollars. You can get some good data. You might not get sales, but you might get some indication how am I placed um, and so forth, right? I mean, just just briefly, um, and obviously you would have to have strategy in place, right? You would have to have a good product. You would have to have some initial reviews maybe, good pictures, your pricing has to be on point. Because if you're selling, I don't know, bathrobes for $1 million, no amount of PPC or AdSpurt magic will change the fact that you will not get any sales. So you have to have a strong market research. You have to have 
everything else done already when you do PPC. But again, I'm just thinking about, you know, yeah, Simas, uh, could you maybe comment a bit? I see you, you got excited when I started mentioning a few hundred euros, so maybe I'm completely off point. Uh, well, it's a relative number, what you said. It's 100 dollars, and uh, it's a different thing what you can get. Imagine if the, the bid cost per click is five dollars or five euros. Uh, so out of 100 ad spend, you will get just 20 clicks. So what can you decide from 20 clicks? Does it convert? That is it not? Is it uh, good at all if the product is okay or not? So out of 20 clicks, you, you're almost blind. You don't know anything. And imagine the same $100 or euros, and if the click costs 20 cents, so you get 500 clicks out of, out of it, and from 500, you can make a decision. So, uh, and those, the cost of per click depends on competition you are in. So it's like, if it's very competitive niche, uh, highly demanded product, highly, uh, 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 traffic driven keyword uh, so most probably uh, the click will cost more so with the same amount of money you can get different results and uh, with the same amount of money you can bring different uh, um, outcomes and then you know sometimes information cost so you, you have to buy that information with a, some certain of money. So if, if the clicks cost a lot, so you will have to spend more to get that information and results. And based on, on those results, you, you, you should make a decision. Okay, good. Uh, Neja, do you want to add to that? Like, uh, okay, I, I will shoot a question. Um, on average, do you guys think uh, in terms of, um, in terms of uh, ad spend, uh, you know, is there some statistics maybe available? Like how much do Amazon sellers on average spend? Is there something like that available? So, so, so maybe, sorry, I will jump in. So maybe Neza knows that because they have thousands of uh, customers probably and thousands of uh, ASINs uh, already optimized. So from the big amount of data, maybe they can make some certain estimations, but from the single seller perspective, Effective. It's you know your answer depends. Depends. Yeah. 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 To be yeah. honest, I think the more we talk about it, it's it, we're going to be running in the same vicious circle because it depends, but it doesn't. But the money that you have, but it depends. But the category, but the competitors, but the. I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. So really just uh, just test. Ju ju just test. Okay. I understood. <laughs> I understood. Um, Vicious cycle, all that stuff. Good, good, good. Let's move along. So uh, let's uh, change gears a bit and let's talk about products. So uh, what kind of products, uh, maybe this is more towards Sima since he have done a lot of market research for his products and the products, product launches that he was responsible for. But what kind of product is like the ideal product for Amazon? So obviously Amazon nowadays uh, allows you to sell big and small items. They have even groceries, right? They have all the good stuff and maybe even drone delivery at some point. I'm looking forward to that. I, I would love to order some some uh, toilet paper and get it delivered by a drone or something similar. That would be my dream. I mean, that would be cyberpunk right there. But anyway, um, you know, you could sell even fridges on Amazon, I think, you know, you can sell really like big items. But um, from the perspective of a seller, what would be I wouldn't say like the ideal item, but uh, what kind of char characteristics would that um, item, sh should it have in order to be more, I would say, optimized for Amazon? Ideal item is the one that brings you money into your pocket. So that's... Okay, uh, the, okay the, so we're back to it depends, okay. <laughs> and, the, and the rest is, you know, your market research results. So it's like I, right now, what, what, when I am at this stage, um, I do not afraid of any product. I do a research, I look for in, into the category. Maybe it's from, for the beginners, it is uh, advisable to avoid uh, supplements, avoid uh, 
avoid uh, electronics uh, and um, I don't know oversized products probably because uh, it requires more skills to handle uh, logistics and other kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. Uh, but um, from my perspective, it's like when I do a deep research, I, I just always make my own calculations. And if the revenue is higher than the loss, then that's okay. So it's, it's a, for me, it's an ideal product. I, I do not classify the products very deeply within other metrics okay good good point thank you very much let's move along um and obviously we are now talking about ppc that's wonderful that's great but what if i am broke or i don't want to spend money on ppc or maybe i'm a seo guru and i i can get my clicks and i can get my visitors using my you know, ninja SEO skills, uh, can you live without PPC on Amazon? Or is it just, you know, is it just, um, is it just a must have? Artem, you said very well, either you're a ninja or you need to use the PPC. So it's, uh, there, there's no way to choose. So, um, and I believe that most of the sellers are not ninjas. So they probably, they will need to use PPC advertising. Also, uh, what Neza showed during the presentation, 60% uh, comes from organic, 40% mm -hmm. comes from PPC. That's the general. So uh, if you're not run PPC, you lose a lot of bunch of sales. And uh, doesn't matter how good Ninja are you, you still need to run. So, my, so you my, think my, still PPC is must have, even though even though you're like if you no, even though I, you optimized I, it. No, 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 Artem. I know sellers who doesn't do PPC management. Okay. Uh, they but they are ninjas. They choose very niche campaigns, niche uh, categories, and they you know if there are just five competitors, so you don't need to run PPC if there's just five competitors in very very small niche and they are satisfied with the sales those products generate out of the organic, that's fine for them. But if you try to go or go to the deeper competition uh, market, then you will need PPC. There's no chance to avoid it. Okay, good point. Thank you very much. Good input. And Neja, obviously working for a company that promotes PPC optimization, you have your hands tied but maybe still you can uh, comment a little bit uh yeah i mean you're correct we are biased um when we but when it comes to this question i mean we pay our bills essentially for managing ppc um one thing i would add is that especially on Amazon advertising, PPC and organic, they kind of work together. Um, I mentioned that briefly in my presentation as mm -hmm. well. Um, but it is very important to note that the work that you will put in for the organic, it will also push your PPC. So the okay. even if you use PPC because it is a must have, you're not an SEO in ninja or you don't want to be because that's a full-time job. And if you're a small yeah. seller, like you have like, 27 full-time jobs at the same time to manage inventory, shipping, um, accounting, and all that fun stuff. So maybe you really don't want yet another um, another full-time job on top. So, I mean, it, yeah, it just helps overall because having good PPC is going to push your organic, but having good organic is going to push your PPC because your descriptions will be better and so on and so forth. So it helps because with the same amount of effort you put in for organic, you can then get really good results from PPC out of it, um, where the effort is no longer in terms of time, in terms of the investment in setting everything up in terms of product images and product descriptions and so on and so forth, but rather just a monetary investment, which I mean, those are the two main currencies we work with these days, right? Time and money. So yeah. Um, we only have 24 hours in the day. So if you're handling shipping, accounting and all that fun stuff, maybe it's easier to just invest a bit of money instead of more time that you no longer have 
um, to get better results to then perhaps help you free you up from another of those 27 full-time jobs you already have as a probably smaller seller. I mean, I know, especially in smaller organizations, like everybody's wearing like so many different hats. Um, so yeah. just from that perspective, and of course, yes, you need to consider our bias here. Um, we would argue that PPC will definitely help you make it on Amazon. But if you are, as you say, that PPC ninja that just knows everything inside and out, it could work. Why not? Yeah. So basically what I'm hearing is that investing in SEO is good, no matter if you do PPC yes. or not. So basically you will have higher conversion rates. You will basically get more out of your marketing budget, uh, no matter if you use PPC optimization platform or not. So at least some sort of basic SEO optimization is helpful making sure your listings are optimized, titles are great, and all that. Okay, that's really good. And- um, I, I tell, uh, sorry. Yeah? I, I would add here, it's a must, what you said. Okay, it's must. a must, okay. So basic SEO optimization is must. Yes, your, your listing has to be optimized before you even start anything. Uh, PPC, PPC campaigns is add-on to the rest of the organic sales. So you have to do the best what you can to get as much organic sales as but breaking up a bit. You you get you get you getting fun you could have gotten. That's uh, that's the thing. Okay. Very good, very good. Maybe uh, Zoom is already trying to tell us that we have been doing this for quite some time and that's why maybe it's interfering with our connection to CMAS. But I think uh, there is maybe uh, time for just one last question before we wrap up this conversation. So um, when I'm starting out with Amazon PPC, what kind of key metrics should I keep in mind? Because obviously the problem with digital and Neja, you did make your point very clear and I completely agree. Offline is kind of like old school because you invest before you know and you cannot change your mind once it's already set in motion. So you cannot stop your TV campaign once you've seen that this, the three seconds that you know, have been shown to viewers is not working. You cannot stop it mid-flight. But with digital, there is one huge problem, too much data, especially for a person that is not, you know, let's use the Ninja again. I guess it's being worn off a, a bit, but um, worn out a bit. But again, if you are not a savvy, savvy PPC, PPC specialist, uh, even Amazon, they have automatic campaigns, obviously, as you mentioned. So they kind of, you know, are in the driving seat and you just uh, decide how much money you're willing to spend. But um, still, once you start moving towards more manual campaigns or you want to, you know, adjust it a little bit further, uh, what would be the key metrics that I should be looking into just to understand how am I doing? Is it amount of sales? Is it my CPC? Is it my CTR? Is it my ROAS? What should, be a, what should I be looking at? I think that, um, I mean, the easiest answer would be everything, but no, I think okay. it depends on what your strategy is for the product. Because for example, a new launch, when you're in the first week of a new product launch, you're not going to be looking at the same number. You're not going to be looking for the same results as you do um, with an already established um, number, uh, sorry, product. Like we said before, when we were talking with Simas about new product launches, what you really want to do is to get that ad in front of as many people as possible to create awareness that this product is here, it's interesting and to kind of start generating interest from that perspective. So you might be looking at more, let's say top of the funnel metric, like impressions, how many people did, did see the, uh, the actual product ad and then clicks, how many people did actually click on that product. Those uh, I would say in the initial days would be at least where our users tend to start. 
when really what they want is to push that product, but they are yeah. realistic in not expecting all that many sales from it because there is mm -hmm. an adoption curve to every new launch. Um, and you need to consider that. Like this is, aside from it being, I, I call it magic because it's machine learning and artificial intelligence and all that fun stuff. It's not really magic. Like it's still a numbers game. Um, and you still have a human on the other side that decides whether or not to buy your product. And with yeah. new product launches that doesn't have reviews, um, that doesn't have that many uh, high ranking or anything like that, it, it just gets tricky to make that initial sale. So I would focus more on the top of the funnel numbers. Then for more established um, products, it depends on what your general business goals are. I mean, of course, what we usually see with Amazon sellers is that it ultimately all boils down to the profit, uh, product profitability. So which product is the most profitable? Am I making money with this or am I not? Because if I'm not, why am I selling it? Do I want to invest more to make it profitable? And if it is making profit, either I'm happy and I leave it at that profitability or I want to increase the profitability if I have um, the space for it. And in all of that, you also need to consider the budget that you have available because all of this, of course, costs, of course, costs money. So you want to start looking at things that advertising cost of sales or return on ad spend. Of course, revenue, like that's the first thing you really look at every morning. I think Seamus might disagree with me, but if I were selling products on Amazon, that's at least what I would check in the morning, like before I open Instagram, what's my revenue on Amazon for the previous day. Um, but in all, what I would actually then boil it down to is you, you kind of get into your flow of checking the numbers that are available to you of the profitability of ROAS, of ACOS, of cost, of revenue, and so on and so forth. But after a while, more than which numbers to check, I would check the variance between the numbers to see if something shifted significantly in a few days, um, in overnight or anything like that. Like, did my profit plummet? Did my ACOS skyrocket? Just st then start dig digging into why and seeing how to fix it. Um, so those, that's where I see these numbers becoming more and more important because it, they keep you in check. They keep all of your situation in check. If it starts varying, too much. I mean, there's always going to be variance because again, you have a human on the other line that either buys or not your product. Um, but it helps detect if there are really any major issues that you need to address. So that's where I would leave. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that answer. Yes, I'll just stop now. <laughs> okay, good. Simas, how about your input? That was really good. I would say just this. Just know your numbers and know your income and know your expenses. If you are, uh, if um, if your income is higher than expenses, then it's okay. So you have to know your your cost of goods. You know you have to know the amount of ad spend you you have per day and so on. And all in all, uh, at the end of the day, when you calculate the numbers, you have to be profitable unless you will not run your business for a long period of time. So uh, at the end of the day, you have to be profitable. So know your, know your numbers, all the numbers, all the business numbers, not only the, the Amazon numbers, but the business uh, which is around you, like accounting cost, all the uh, rent and uh, logistics and all, all of the numbers you have to know it, uh, not only the PPC. So what concerns PPC, uh, I always, uh, at the beginning, I make a decision about the launch phase to know either it's a launch phase uh, or it's uh, just the, the phase when you have just the business to get product running and that's it. And uh, if it's launch, uh, launch phase, so then you have to track the rankings a lot. So if it's getting better or not. And uh, yeah, so keyword rankings, uh, product ranking overall, if there's a room to grow uh, at the beginning of the, of the launch phase. When the, the product is already established, then you have to know your basic numbers, cost of goods, logistics, and other stuff so that at the day 
at the end of the day, you would know that your business is profitable or not. Okay, very good. Very good. Uh, good comments. Thank you very much. So again, if I sum it up, uh, just to maybe make it easier for our viewers and listeners. So basically, during launch phase, usually your strategy might be different compared to when you're already an established seller or you're going into an established category. So your, your strategy basically will most likely change within time. So when you start out, if you're starting absolutely fresh, again, depending on the category, competition, no competition, but you will most likely um, not um, be so aggressive with profitability. You will kind of want to get some numbers in maybe, again, maybe um, if you are just starting really fresh and you just want to establish that baseline. And then as with health, you know about heart rate variability, right? that signals a lot, not the pulse itself, but the variability. So once you actually have established the base, you will start looking at the numbers. And since we have major shifts in the marketplace, we have pandemic, we have um, presidential elections in, for example, USA, everything can impact everything, right? So if people have negative outlook on the future, they might not be buying as much. Maybe they will push and buy toilet paper, as we've seen people have been doing for quite some time. So I never thought, you know, selling toilet paper could be a huge business, but again, shelves were empty at some point. So obviously everything is constantly changing and you have to, I guess, the best advice would be you have to really know what you're doing. You have to constantly be learning and you have to be on the lookout. What is working? What is not working? If something changed, why possibly it might change? Why, why did it change? And then try to adopt to that change by be it PPC, increasing budget, lowering, uh, going back to your product, maybe even adjusting profitability, coming up with a, maybe a different product. So again, I guess having a quick feedback cycle is the best way to move forward. So you constantly are testing new things you are seeing and adopting to changes. All right, um, guys, it's been a long episode, but I think it was filled with really valuable information worth a lot of money. Again, just for our viewers and listeners, I'll have links to AdSpurt and obviously to contact information of SEMA. So if you want to get to know more about AdSpurt, AdSpurt is an optimization platform for PPC campaigns and using the link down below, you can start and use it for, I think, 30 days for free. So you can see if it's working for you. If it brings you money, hey, great. If not, well, at least you didn't spend any. And Simas obviously is doing really well as a seller and he's helping other sellers as well to become successful. So I will have some information about him as well in the description below. But guys, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for having us, Artem. It's been lovely. Perfect. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Artem. Thank you, guys, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.